Jerry Compton. I'm a past ASC representative for the western area of ASC. Last year I was the, was the area director. And this year I'm a student member of the Environmental Education Committee for AIA. And uh, as a member of that... Oh, I was talking to Ray this morning and found out from him that you know when you, when you pay your tuition, there's a $50 fee, it's a student fee. Well, part of that's going to parking, and part of it's going to paying for our portfolios. And the other part of it is going to be, going to be a student fund that we have to do with as we see fit. And uh, basically what Ray wants, he wants to get some kind of uh, representative, you know, student group. And uh, he wants one person from each studio to either be, you know, picked you know, by the, by the students, hopefully, you know. I don't want to say elected, but, I, you know, the normal student government thing just doesn't seem to hold on around here. But, but uh, I think if we can get, the, there's about eight studios happening right now. If we can get those eight people that are interested in putting some time into it, and they're interested in uh, the accreditation of the school, which is, which is coming up, you know, and, and, the, uh, and evaluating students that are going to graduate, which I'm pretty involved with right now, then I'd really, I'd really appreciate if you'd, if you'd, uh, you know, make an effort in your studio, you know, to get that together and find out one person that's interested and that's willing to put some time into it, and we'll schedule a meeting in about a week, you know, after you've, after every, after these people have been picked, and uh, set up some meeting times, and we'll probably meet like every two weeks to talk over important issues, and then those students that are that are at the meetings will go back to their studios and report to the kids anything that's really important. Because we really have a problem with, with communications around here, you know. This is the only real meeting that we have, and it gets so big that it's really kind of unruly, you know. Is there any, is there any comment on that? Anybody uh, think it's a good idea, bad idea? Say something. Just, uh, I, just, I don't really understand what you're talking about. You're talking about, a, uh, in other words, a kind of proportion of funding to certain uh, students? Well, each student, okay, you put in $50, right? Part of that $50 goes to your parking and part goes to your portfolio. And say that comes to $40, there's $10 left. So each student puts $10 into a student fund. So everybody here is going to be contributing to this fund. You know? And unless we have some type of, of way of representing everyone, then the funds are going to be spent as those eight people see fit, basically. So like right now, we're, we're using part of the funds to, to put this video show together. And any other student projects that, that you feel are worthwhile, you should, you should come to that committee of eight and, uh, you know, give them your ideas and, and maybe we'll allocate some money, you know. I think, I think it could be used, uh, it could be a pretty sizable amount, you know, if depending on how much the parking costs, I guess. But, uh, so is there any other questions? Yes. Is this committee already forming for the state member committee? It's totally nebulous right now. Basically, our, we just have to get our studios together and, and one person will be picked from the studio and they'll represent everyone. It should be someone that's, you know, as I said, that's willing to put some time in because it's not going to be that easy of a job. Okay, anybody who's interested in doing that, you know, make it known to your instructor. And if your instructor, you know, doesn't, doesn't press the class to find someone, I'd, I'd appreciate it if your students would, you know, press him to press the class to find someone. The other, the other thing that's kind of important about the accreditation is that as we go through the accreditation process, or at least try to evaluate how we fit into this accreditation process, uh, we're trying to get student input and student involvement, which I guess again relates to the group of people that you're talking about, so that as those of us in the faculty get together and talk about uh, looking at the school, looking at what we're trying to do here, and trying to put our program into words that would satisfy that particular requirement for the you know, accreditation board to look and review, that the students should have input so that whenever we meet to talk about these things, those students that have been selected out of the studios would also meet, and then what we are doing jointly would come back to everybody else. Does everybody hear that? Okay. Because there might be that kind of involvement that some people might be more interested in, so I just wanted to make that point. Right. I would wonder if it's desirable just to have one person from each studio in the sense that there might be two or three people from one studio who are particularly qualified and interested. And uh, that well, would seem too bad to... Uh, 
just limit it on the basis of one person from the studio? Well, what we can do in a case like that is, you know, one person take half a semester and the other person take the other half, or something like, you know, something along those lines. I think it's best to keep the size of that group down as small as you can. Eight is too big as far as I'm concerned, really, to get to get work done, you know. It's, it's the size that we have to use because that's how many studios we have. But, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but I hear you talk about student representation, and it seems arbitrary to set that as well. The person, the person that involves himself in it is going to have to get the, the backing of all students in his studio. That's that's how it should work. You know, I'm not going to say you have to go elect them or something. You know, but you know, however, however the studio figures out to do it. You know, but you should have someone that's responsible and that's that's going to represent your views. You know, and that's up to you to pick them. You know? Presentation is uh, one that's very important because the accreditation is really the opportunity to develop the curriculum, which is what we're all involved in here at the school. And I think the representation of the students in terms of their input there is real important. And it was pointed out to me that some studios, that the sizes vary tremendously in the studios. And I think the whole issue of how the students be represented, it shouldn't just be fastly decided. I think it needs to be thought through in terms of the political structure of the school. Oh, I can understand that, but at the same time, you know, we can't take three weeks deciding. I mean, we need it. We need a group now. It's happening. You know, but I don't, I'm not. I'm not trying to. You know, the thing is, you know, I, in, from past experience, you know, if it isn't pushed through, it doesn't happen here. You know, it, no one takes the initiative to make it happen unless it, unless it, there's initial push and something comes out of it immediately. You know, so I have a tendency to, to not want to, you know, look and overlook. You know this. I think I think whoever that the studios, you know, the representatives from the studios are, you know, will be screened by everyone else, and, and they'll know whether or not they're responsible to represent them. And if someone else, you know, doesn't think they did a good job, you know, just open your mouth and say so. You know. Yeah, but on the same token, I tend to agree with him that uh, at least you know at least two people from every from every design group, I think. Well, the thing is. I understand, I understand what you're saying about the size, but it's just in terms of feedback, it's just, you know, very, could be very one-sided. I understand that. Of course, there'll be, there'll be these meetings, you know, to, uh, to supplement, you know, where everyone misses. And that also raises the other issue about uh, faculty meetings, and I don't know, uh, all the faculty isn't here and all the students aren't here, but, which is really bad, but... I'm wondering about the student representation and faculty meetings. I wonder if any of that's going on. I think that's what we're talking about, and that's why we've got to keep the size of it down. I mean, not maybe not all faculty meetings. There's a lot well, of that's what I'm talking you know, about. We don't have all, to. All faculty meetings and the decision-making process of the meetings. I'm just wondering uh, if there's any student representation at all. Bill, can you speak to them? Right now there isn't, and I think even amongst the faculty, we have different opinions as to whether there should be or shouldn't be. Myself, frankly, I don't think that it's necessary in all cases. I think in some cases it is. I think if uh, Don and I had a conversation about this just the other day, if there are areas of interest that students feel strongly about, and if it is an area or these are areas of discussion, that include themselves in faculty meetings, and there's no reason why students, those students specifically or any students, shouldn't be involved in those areas. By the same token, there are other issues that occur in you know, the process that may or may not be. Now, in some cases are, I don't think, necessitate students being there. And that's my own point of view. If you talk to the other seven or 18 instructors, you'll get very different points of view. That's Glenn and Adi, can you guys speak to them? What do you think? You know, do you think we disrupt your meeting? Or? <laughs> well, I, it's, I didn't say you I'm, No, I, I'm, you know. I, I agree. I don't. I don't think that we should. We should have to attend every faculty meeting to find out they're doing something behind closed doors. I think so I don't should, think that's I really happening. Feel strong you know? that we should. And I don't really. I know that in a lot of other situations, I think that we've had in the past uh, two years ago. I think we had one or two representatives, and we had fa at faculty meetings. And I don't really think that's enough. Not. Not as. And it's not really necessary. I don't feel to have. You know this feedback between students and, and faculty and faculty. I, mean, I just think it's really important because a lot, I don't know, over the last summer or over the last year, there's a lot of curriculum changes, a lot of policy changes that are totally, you know, no 
no feedback was, was, was ever expressed by the students. And I think, that's, that's, I think that's really poor. Well, Arnie, I think that you and others that were okay, interested in finding out how they began or how they ended up happening or how they go about happening should really, rather than talk about you know, these nebulous kinds of things, should talk about specifics and then ask very specific questions and be included in a meeting that answers those questions. And then you can bring the information back. Yeah, but it, that's, that, that's all fine, but that, that can lead to a very long process. And what I'm saying is just if there was student representation at faculty meetings, then, and not necessarily involving students' feedback, then after that, if students can bring the issues back to the, to the students and the faculty when we meet together like this, and then I think it'll just avoid a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of this process, you know. Getting about this, you know, issue raising. Well, that's why I say in my own field there are some issues that if they were if they were discussed generally amongst the 180 students, which is what we have now, it would take a great deal of time to solve. The problem would take a great deal of time to solve, and sometimes it's more readily solved by fewer people. And there are very basic kinds of issues, like there were some students that were very perturbed about the fact that they weren't involved in the selection of a new secretary. As far as I'm concerned, it wasn't necessary. Right. These are the kinds of things that we deal with. So and there are some people that are very perturbed about the notion of tuition being raised, yet in the course of, of going about living every day, everything is being raised and if we were left up to a group of people to suggest when tuition should be raised, it would probably occur best after they've graduated. But that's, yet, well, that's, yes. see, but that's not, that's not my point. My point is if, no, I'm if, just if, 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 if the student body, let's say there's 200 people, and and there's a there's a designated faculty and an administration. The administration is raising issues, and the students have no feedback and no response to those issues at all, or have no feelings. And these things are just passed along with the thought in mind that well, they know what they're doing, so we'll let them do it. I think that's I think it's really a poor situation. I don't I don't think the trust is a poor situation because part of what we do mutually is trust each other. If you want to say that, that it's not a matter of trust, it's just a matter of, of human response. No, it is. Well, it's a matter of trust and it's a matter of human response many times when it's necessary. Like, for me to raise an issue to all 180 people here, just a blanket kind of an issue, I'm not sure that more than 20 might be interested, so I might be taking the other, you know what I mean? I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to, like, major policy okay, decisions, I mean, major curriculum decisions, add additional faculty, okay, raising what I, tuition. What I think you ought to do that is, like, Don and I had the... Don made a suggestion. If there are issues that interest you in terms of the school administration or in terms of policy and all these kinds of things, to state what those issues are and then represent them either with you or a group of you or whatever it's going to be in whatever way, and then just make them known. But to always keep talking about being perturbed or disturbed about things that were done and never putting your finger on them doesn't help you or it doesn't help us. Yeah, one in thing. Other words, well, wait a second. In other words, what you're saying is that you, you're completely negative the fact of a student sitting in on that. I'm not negative at all. I said that it, it's possible, and I said that in some cases it might be justified. We had situations before, and it may have been while you were here or before you were here, where in, in a couple of instances there were very personal things that, that uh, came up in faculty meetings to relate to one or two students' very personal problems. I would be very hesitant to include student representation into those kinds of problems unless that student wanted other students to know about it. That's one issue. The other thing that happened was that there were students involved, and uh, sometimes, and I'm not saying this is going to happen all the time, but experience has shown in a very limited way that sometimes what comes out of the meetings is quite different from what was discussed at the meeting, depending on your point of view and depending on what your interests were. So there are all these kinds of things that you have to be careful about. I'm not saying that student representation in fact means from my own from my own point of view is not welcome. I'm saying yes it is welcome in some instances, but I shouldn't be uh, my point of view shouldn't be negated simply because I don't agree with students being there all the time. And that's my very fine point of view. I think I think what has to happen is we have to establish some kind of credibility, you know, as a as a student organization. You know, before we can really, you know, get the kind of of feedback that you want, you know? If we if we have students... It's, not, it's just not a matter of feedback, it's just a matter of what happened, what was, what major items were discussed. What you what, want. Just, just basically what's happening. Listen, because what you want is, is to, whenever there's a, a basic change in the way that the school works, we should hear about it. Right. And if that's what you want, right? right. I think once, once we have established our credibility as a student organization, that 
those kinds of things will, will be discussed with us. You know, because it's our job to get it back to the people, to get it back to the students, to I tell them about it. <laughs> I'm saying that after a while, we're going to be sitting in the, on their faculty, faculty meetings, and they're going, to, they're going to want us to, because we're going to be inputting instead of always being negative. Because that's what they expect, you know? Yeah, we ended up hearing about what happened. Organization that had any kind of feedback to the rest of the students or had any input to the faculty. You know, you can't expect them to, to listen to 50 people in a meeting like this talking to them. What you have to have is one or two people that are, that has got everyone else's opinion and they've synthesized it into something that they can give to the faculty so that they can understand our point of view. You know, and that's been our problem. There's been no, there's been no feedback from student to teacher because there hasn't been the mechanics for it. You know, and that's what we're trying to set up right now. The plea for the representation came from Ray, you know? Yeah, I didn't so. say that. I didn't say we never had representation. Well, we don't. Penny. What, what I don't understand is why this um, seems to be so difficult. Wouldn't it be possible? I mean, I really don't like the idea of the representative. And that's probably just me, but I went through that really strong in high school. And um, I was a little representative. I got elected. And, you know, I elected another little representative. And the thing is, it doesn't seem to me that the school is so large that it wouldn't be possible if you've got an agenda to have the meeting open. And those students that are interested in coming to the meeting can sit in, in on the meeting. But to have one representative elected, I think that'll die out really quick. At least as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't want to be the representative. And I'm not really excited about electing a representative because I think that starts playing a game that I was just tired of playing. I think the school is small enough and I think if people are interested, they can sit in on the meeting, or, or does that seem to be a problem? Up to this point, that's what we've tried, though, Penny. But I've never heard of any other meetings going on. Really never, not not meetings. with faculty meetings, but with everything else. You know? that's, I mean, not that many people are interested in that. I mean, those that are interested are going to be interested in having a meeting. Well, I think you might be surprised once you, once you get a, an organization going that is, that is in some way viable. To some extent, this is happening. But you're not dealing with seminar changes, class changes, design hours, different kinds of things. You know, those are issues that I think are very, very important. And I'm not really asking for a voice at these meetings. We're just asking to sit in and, 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 right, and experience the feedback and the interaction that goes on. I agree with you. But I'm saying what's not important to you, you have to understand. Right. It's very important to other people. Absolutely. You shouldn't be too surprised when you find other people raising issues that could be a waste of your time. Right, and that's why I feel that, that issues, all issues are important, and not just certain select issues. I understand about what you were discussing about individual problems that, that may be stuck, discussed on a faculty basis. But issues that concern the school as a whole, I think, is very important for students to, to experience the interaction that takes place at a faculty meeting. I think it's very important. I don't think that we should separate these two. I think it becomes very dangerous. Uh, I, the, other thing, the other thing that I can think of, no, speak up, guys. Okay. Yeah, everybody can. Uh, uh, this defense of everybody else, it comes to my own mind, it has to do with the nature of the student group here and the nature of people who want to say we're establishing a place to go to school. We're establishing a place it's going to be something, and whether that's something, a lot of that something was decided by the people who left jobs to come here and establish a school. A lot of decisions were made individually and personally as to what they wanted to be involved with. And even I have that choice. If I see this school becoming other than I want to maintain an involvement in, I would quit. That's my option. And everybody else here is free to do the same thing. It's not a threat, it's just an option that I have. That's the reason why I love Pomona. It became a very uncomfortable, uh, you know, impossible situation with which to work. And I liked it. We got together and thought that this would be something we'd like to start. And what this thing is, has been in process all these years. We're going into our fourth year. What we're doing today is quite different from what we're, from what we started. And it's quite different only because there has been this involvement, more or less, of student input. Some students are more vocal and make themselves heard. Other students do care less. Even the population of the school has changed. In the original 75, there are probably more people, percentage-wise, that were interested in what you call an alternative school of architecture than there are now, 180. And all you have to do is kind of look to see where people are going. So that's a different attitude that's occurred over a period of time. I'm saying that that avenue of discussion, you know, should stay open. It is. 
this, and I think you probably have different points of view as to how it's done. But uh, we have to look at each of our interests. If you have a specific interest related to how the school works, like other students, make yourself heard in many different ways, either by accumulating, getting together with other students that have a like attitude or an interest, or by stating your own point of view, either individually with each of us, or as a group, or as a team meeting. Energies is an example of that. Energies is a way of, of just a, a network of information that can occur. It should occur not as a series of innuendos like, did you hear that Bill Simone is doing this, or did you hear that all these people are that? No, I don't think that's what's happening, but you're, you see, you're beginning to sound like the administrators of Pomona. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I agree, I, I, I believe in it. You know, well, listen, listen, I, I believe in your, in your, your, you know, what's behind you, you know? And, every, and how we've evolved is fine in my estimation. But, you know, all, the, all that we're saying is that we want to know when you're making decisions that are going to affect us so that we can have some input. The, the thing that's clear to me out of all this, there's really a need to design the uh, social control system, like how these decisions are made and so on. That that's a fundamental design problem that this school, this community is facing. And if it's done well, soundly, then it'll solve a whole lot of problems. If it isn't, then it's going to create a whole lot of problems. Yeah. And I think the time has to be taken to do that. And that, interestingly, I think is a very worthwhile project, design project for the school, and very related to accreditation, because it has to do with an individual's relationship to the community. And if we can't get our community to get it, we can't relate to the outside community. So I think we should take the time to do that. Who's going to be the uh, ultimate designer? That's the problem. Well, the people who are interested in, in sitting and working it out. The faculty and the students who want to work out a system of government for the school. Well, that's, I think that's, that's what we're trying to, trying to create, you know? I think maybe what we ought to do is just run it through once, you know, pick one, try it. If it doesn't work, change it. You know, that's, that's been the policy at the school that's when it doesn't work. That's architecture, though, I think. <laughs> But in human relations, you know, there's got to be a group that decides what happens to begin with. There's no group now, you know. There's a whole bunch of students. If we set up the you, know? meeting, you see, if we set up the meeting, and this was the purpose of a meeting, and we were to take, you know, and sit out and have a meeting just with that as the agenda and see what kind of models we can come out with for what kind of decisions have to be made right. and how they should be organized. I'm up for that. Jerry? How's Wednesday? Next Wednesday at 12 o'clock, Sam. Can I? Jerry, Friday, this Friday? Friday. How many people would be interested in doing that? Just let the people who are interested. All right, now, everybody's putting up their hands. I want to see them. Friday. <laughs> I, I don't want to I don't want to come here and find nobody here. I'm going to be pissed. Not that, you know, it's going to, you know. I get a little perturbed whenever you're, everybody comes up with this heavy paranoia particularly about the one faculty meeting we hold a year, which is about it. And, and, and that goes on for about three minutes up there, certain, going over a few items which we can go out. As far as I'm concerned, I, it, there's so much mess on that every time that I don't know, Glenn feels, the other guys feel, I just can do it out in the middle of the room. I don't give a crap. I mean, we'll, we'll usually give you the, the feedback. We just don't want to, there's personalities discussed in those meetings, and if you don't give a damn how people are discussed, we don't either, you know, but I think some people will, will be hurt by the kinds of things that sometimes are discussed in this meeting. And, and, but I think a more positive way now is to get into this overall thing, look at the thing on a big overview, deal with, the, with all the budgeting items out front as they will come up so that you'll understand them. You will not be voting on them right now how much you will pay next year, but let's do it on an evaluation of what we'll be paying over three years or four years to do the kind of education plan we want to do. So you're, so that takes away that immediate involvement at that level, and but will give you the overview. And so, from my standpoint, I mean, uh, from my experience with group dynamics is the same as Jerry's. I've been in a lot of organizations, and I know most people don't want to work, most people want to listen, and most people just, just move away from, from, from it after they've heard a little bit, and then it, it dies out. We, uh, dynamically here, uh, just said, well, let's avoid that first step. I'm happy to have that first step go on. Everybody's invited. We'll do it open. We'll do the whole thing out front. 
you'll get bored. A lot of people don't want to work with it. It's not interesting, totally interesting to everybody. And then we'll have a core group left. That group, I don't care what they do then. I, I, I just hope that people who get involved, though, aren't trading off studio time. And you're going to have to let us have some say on that end because quite often people, and you can, I mean, I think some people should. Uh, Jerry's been involved in organizations that have uh, student organizations for as long as I know. Uh, he knows how that works. We know how it works here. Well, last year we opened up for the last three weeks. Everybody was supposed to put in their input into what the plan was going to be, how we're going to change our catalog, and we got back zero, 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 zero. And so, See, and, and we had a me the second meeting. There were three people. The problem was Ina, 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 Bill, and me, and one student. Huh? We don't have any. We don't have any student organization. One. There's just students, you see. And that, that's the problem. The, until there's some kind of organization, the students here are never going to have you know, any kind of real say because there's going to be too many points of view. You know? and as long as there's a million points of view coming in, you're never going to get anything done because you can't make any decisions. Well, that's why I like to ask for it in writing because then I think you, you can get zero in. It's a little easy. It, it takes more time. It takes more effort. Therefore, it takes more thought. Therefore, it, it's more meaningful. Now, you know, there are other processes than that, but I've always found that that weeds out the people who want to do from those who want to listen. And those who want to listen can, can get it through another process. They say, well, we'll run videos of it. And then if you want to sit down and watch a boring video, that's what you do. I don't care. They really don't. I mean, it doesn't matter. Great. Right. 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 Is school school meeting right. like this, you mean? This doesn't really work. We, I mean, if... Well, you can't enforce it, can you? I know you can't enforce it, but I'm just saying the power to be isn't really at this meeting, right? I mean, right. all different points of view. All different points of maybe, view aren't here. Maybe you and I, Audie or Bill, can agree that we want to interact with the students or something, but, you know. Well, we're, Jim or Tom here today, so we can very talk to you. Well, okay. No, I, no, there is that point of view. There are two. Well, it's which is part of, definitely right? think, part of the decision making. There are some people who don't think the students should be involved. I don't agree with that. They're outnumbered anyway. <laughs> so, it does, well, really, it doesn't. I mean, if you're taking on a Democratic vote, they're, they are outvoted. So, but well, I don't really so, blame them up to this point because there's never been a. Well, they always think it's just bullshit, but I mean, then they don't want to waste their time. And some of us don't feel it's a waste of time because I think governance is important. And, and, and I do feel that. that but I don't. But I don't believe in a lot of meetings. I never have. I I, I, I hate faculty meetings. I hated it when I was in, in the college system. I thought it was a waste of energy and time. I think that certain things have to, have to be decided every so often. And usually they're, they're just a quick look at the budgetary items. What do we do with all the delinquent payments? You know, how do we how can we hire ahead? And those kinds of things. Plus the fact I think a lot of you don't even know the history every time. I guess it has to be reiterated. I know there were some discussions on students don't have involvement in, in faculty change. That's not true. Steve Salkowitz was brought in, recommend, recommended by students. Uh, Ron Rezik was brought in, recommended by students. Terry Glassman was sat through a process with several other faculty at that time. There were only about two that came in. Ina was one who was not looked at by, by faculty, by students in, in general. Uh, uh, Eric was, was another one. These, again, were last because we didn't know where our numbers are, which is one of our problems. You guys don't pay your, your money in time for us to really be able to project. So they were hired right as the semester was beginning. And that's what's going to continue to happen if we don't have any lead time. See, the reason we have these lead times on payments, so we know, are we going to have 180 students or are we going to have 120? So you, sometimes you don't have enough time to bring the students forward to even decide whether the faculty should be there. If you know anybody, and you have anybody you're really strong on, that's, we've, we've always taken this on and, and accepted this, and this has been part of the process. And I don't, I think for anybody saying it isn't, it's really wrong. You didn't have any choice in the revision. I didn't hear about it until it was going by the way. You just don't know. Oh, man, you, that, you know, you know, how, I was how do you sign ups. I, I did a communication this big for everybody to see that. This is the meeting for that. Uh, there were three meetings held of that. If you weren't here, that's your tough luck. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? But I mean, that certainly See, wasn't it. undercover. That was, you know, I was, it said communication, communication, communication. I mean, really insulting. You know, I mean, it was meant to almost be that. And we got through and there were two people there. So I, I really felt at that time, you know, the student body as a whole doesn't really, doesn't really care about it. And then, 
then I get a nice written thing that, that's understandable, easy to throw into the, the works, and it's done. It's easy. That's why I still am, I still favor writing rather than most people. I just don't. I mean, my feeling is most people don't want to verbalize. Most people are too lazy to write. But at least if you write it, it's there. We're ready to use it. We can understand it, and it's done. And we know you're 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 serious about your point of view. A lot of people don't have a point of view. I don't blame you. And and if you don't, then somebody else is making those decisions for you. And that'll that'll continue to go on. But that doesn't mean we don't have a process whereby a point of view can be heard. That's all. Any time that you know, if Penny didn't say anything for two years, and in her third year she never shut up, then she would be heard in her third year. You know that, that, that really. And the same with any new student in or any old student. At the time you want to be heard, you'll be heard. And if there's enough support for your point of view, that point of view will be supported. As long as there's, unless it's so economically unsound that we can't possibly afford it without everybody agreeing to, you know, X number of dollars increase in tuition in order to make it go. And so that's, that's the plan. Well, I'm John, John can be one part I don't know how you do that. I mean, I, how do you make a person speak in public who doesn't enjoy speaking in public? It's a hard one. How do you have a, how do you teach people that? How do you get people to ask questions when they feel insecure as a question? No, I was just saying we all should look at ourselves. I know that. Hey, if you can. John, do you have any ideas? That's a great idea. Some kind of interpersonal design studio needs to be designed just like there's a uh, the other kind of design studio. And the people should come in and start learning about those processes and how they function in them. They start becoming socialized, culturated to the community so they can participate in it. And I think it has to be learned just like the other kind of design needs to be learned. And I think the stakes are every bit as important as uh, the technical kinds of skills that are involved. Begin by establishing what our goals are, let's say, at this point in time, and how we are meeting those goals at this point in time, or how we should or can meet those goals. And I thought this way we would throw out attitudes that uh, we may have talked about through the years, uh, and we'll see how close we are to where we were and how many new attitudes we might have. So. Uh, let's just sort of start it that way. How, what do you see as our, our major goal in this school at this point in time, or one of them? Let's list some goals and, and take a look at them. What we're going to discuss right here, because otherwise, it's a goal accomplished. In terms of how we're going to discuss it, what, what are the goals in terms of the process of all these people discussing this together? Since, since most students, I think, are in agreement that, that accreditation is the process, process that we want to, uh, as a school, go through, why don't we follow the outline set down there and just discuss those issues that come up? Well, they're kind of both, I think. I, I read them as the same myself, in general. I, don't. I mean, there, as you said, there's a lot of overlap. I think they're pretty much overlapped. It's just a question of whether you... you one thing we do have, if you took this performance criteria that we already have written down here, they also, it's already established in a, in a, in a grading matrix, you know, which you could probably, you could take those two things and go through and, you know, decide on a scale of one to ten, how much are we, how, how well are we doing in each one of the areas, and then just weed it out through that in a very, rather, maybe that isn't such a simple thing either, because you'll have everybody having slightly different values. But I wonder if, if the... If that's really true, that the ultimate goal is to get accredited. I mean, because personally, I don't feel that that should be the ultimate goal of what we're doing. Well, it was sort of tacit in that there wasn't any uh, negative discussion. Well, it seems to me that there's, you know, some other issues which may preclude the notion of our fitting into some of the parameters of, of being accredited, which may override the importance of getting accreditation at this point. I think we should look at it after we've more or less defined what do we want to be, what should our program be, how are we going to satisfy our needs and goals as a group. 
terms of what this thing is going to be used for? And what's the this whole output? Can you comment? Here? What well, is the it, output of this whole discussion going to relate to the development exactly? education development plan, yeah. which states where you are, where you intend to go, and how are you, do you have the resources to do it? I mean, it's really See, no more than that, and and uh, so if you are introducing elements of the you know, new elements, then how are you going to accomplish them? And how will they be done? That's really all there is about it. And then all they're doing is, is throwing down a few guidelines that we're just using for guidelines. They're not going to actually necessarily relate only to these, but I mean, it makes it a lot easier to give us a framework that makes a little bit of sense, I think, to, to work within as we go into this thing. Because here they're kind of looking out for the student, they're looking out for the prof, they're looking out for the whole process. They want to make this sure that the student has some say in this whole thing. In a normal institution, a lot of this is done just because architectural programs in a normal university doesn't have the right to make their own choices of where they're going and what they're doing, and that the institution overrides what goes on. And so therefore, sometimes this is used just to get the administration to be more supportive of the program. We don't have that problem. And because we don't have that problem, we therefore have a wider open set of issues. And that, that's also it makes it a little more difficult because we're dealing with this whole, this whole other aspect of how you make the best community happen outside of a normal university framework. And uh, I mean, that's really our challenge. And that's what our school is primarily, how it primarily is different from other schools. So that, so that does get back to what you stated in the faculty. The first thing for the faculty we probably would have done with student input would have been, let's, let's take a look at where we are right now and where do we feel there's some weaknesses and then how are we going to implement this from further and then how are we going to make the graduate program stronger as we start to move up the line. That's where our thrust would be, at least that's where mine would be. The, the student input then would be, how do you, you know, make that, that possible? Then, since we wanted to deal with it at all levels, we thought, well, okay, let's, let's go one meeting at least open in which we see some of the issues and you hear the issues, but now we're trying to bring them back again because they get somewhat amorphous, and I think all those issues are good. They should be dealt with. But I don't think everybody has to deal with every one of those issues who doesn't really want to do that because there's a lot of work to be done, but there does have to be the intermesh. So, yes, we have... We would normally start with, here's where we are, here's where we've come, these are the positive points of the program. But we would evaluate that here are, what, here are some areas where we're lacking and this is the way we intend to change them. And that's what this is supposed to be about. Because I just get the feeling that there was a lot more negative being said than anything positive about well, it's where that we were. And, and yeah. that would be one of the things in a small, to, to get that out and to speak more in positive terms or like uh, somebody stated that, that several of the teachers I guess bent over backwards to be here more often and to do these other things that others weren't available. But maybe the point should just be that we'd like to see them more available and instead of kind of docking people for not being available. Just say that, that the student would like to, this interaction other than just the normal hours. Well, this you know, if this if we were dealing with this, I think every one of us sees where the thrust is of that. If, you know, the idea of how you can put it together is maybe a little hard, but I think we understand the thrust, and I think, well, we're not, you know, I think, of course, Bill's thing is, he's one of the few students who's really asking for that part, which I think is really a, the biggest, the biggest issue, is how do you make that work in the school, you know, and then the other issue is how do you, how does everybody keep their personal freedom? I mean, there's nothing more important than personal freedom. How do you get that within a system? That's, that's the world's political problem, right? How do you, you know, how do you keep those two things in balance? And that's sort of what we're, I think, what we're trying to do. We have what we're trying to do. So from my standpoint, I would, you know, I just break us down according to our, just where we want to work. You know, who wants to work where, and then you make it. And then break up so the two. So it could if, be yeah, within, maybe then, maybe certain people are asked to do it. Curriculum and community, was that the two? I guess, if you want to. That's a way to find it. Yeah. There was one with you know, the old. That we'll all understand you know, what we're talking about, whatever problem it is that's, that's put forth. And like the way he, he stated it was you uh, have a concept which is, in his case, he was talking about the performance cri criteria for the, uh, for the accreditation thing. And, uh, the education and development plan is what we're trying
trying to put together. And what he wanted to do is take the concept, uh, and then as a second phase, how is it implemented? You know, you like say, okay, concept, uh, we need a student lounge. How is it implemented? We have to get students, students together to do it. Basically, you know, form, is, form a group of people that are interested in putting that energy into it, and then you know, having anyone who can at whatever times that they can involve themselves with it. And then like, you know, comment on the mechanism, like how it's going to happen, basically. And uh, synthesis or goal, you know, I mean, exactly what it is, you know, the direction that, that we want to push the whole thing in. Has anybody got a copy of the... Uh... I took down a whole bunch of things. All, those, all that stuff that we wrote down on the board the other night, you know? Like, information. For creative community, I, I've got listed under it. Information sharing, social interaction, we should, we should have some kind of a way of having social interactions with the teachers, you know, well, to get that together. But what Ray, had, Ray, Ray was discussing was uh, having like a breaking at 6 o'clock every day and going upstairs and just having a wine social or, you know, just, you know, a pot, the potluck thing could be a sort of thing. Where all the instructors you know, are required. Where the instructors are, are going to be there also so that we can relate to them. Was he said when you said that? Okay, well that's that was the idea that I was putting forth. That I thought that you know there should be more interaction. Basically, when we first started the school, the idea was that there would be ten instructors and that every student would have as much you know out of each that he wanted. Right, could have could, you know, but there's no but that, each one. But that doesn't happen because no, it hasn't it happened so because they've broken their little group of they've broken it people. down like you know they they you know, said. Uh -huh. It came about because it was the easiest way to do it. The easiest way to do it was to break it down into little groups. Because right. the only, it couldn't... What the students want? Shelly, that hasn't got anything to do with it. The fact yeah. is that we've gotten, to the, we've gotten past that point. Are you saying you want to go back to, to whatever that point No, was? I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that we have, we can't, we've shifted too far to the right, we have to move back to the middle. We have to be able to relate more to, to individual, to other than our individual instructor. In, or at least have access to if them. You had, in some way. Don't you think that there should be a monitoring, monitoring device? If, if, you know? if some instructor, he comes and teaches only his class and then he's gone, and he, he teaches all the people that really enjoy teaching or whatever, do you want, want to get rid of him? No. What I'm him? saying is that he has a responsibility to everyone that pays tuition. And that he shouldn't spend all of his time with five students that he digs just because the other guys he doesn't like. And there should be some kind of monitoring device for that. I, I get bitches from people all the time that say, oh, God, this teacher, I just don't relate to him. Maybe it's a student's fault, and we'll find out. Yes, yeah, see, that's, that's one of the... That's you know, maybe that's it is, what maybe it's all the student's fault. Is, the fact that they claim that the problem is there's certain yeah. students... But that doesn't help the students right. ...more they're motivation and more effort. Yeah. 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 But then there's others that are totally... Motivation is not doing it. Teacher ignoring another student. Yeah. Yeah. No. Motivation, they, if you go up to somebody and ask them for help, and they say, you know, I'm doing it. Yeah, but I've seen so motivation has nothing to do with it. I think it does, though. I, I've seen I've seen some people come in and slide through, and so the guy says, "Hey, okay, well, why should I waste waste all my time on this guy when I've got these five other guys that are really pumping out?" Yeah. And he goes, "Well, man, it's not." We're not talking about within the same student. You know, I think Jimmy's addressing himself to other other just. I think just black or white, totally. Sure. But to say that an instructor only works with people he likes, I don't think that's quite true. I don't think it's possible. But but. I also hear that there are certain students that are really working, and those are the ones that grab the instructor because naturally he or she is going to respond to that one who's really putting something out. Yeah. I think I think if you know if, if the student gives fifty percent, the teacher's going to give fifty percent. I mean, I you know they're all likable people. I mean, they're all you and me. It's it's no type of you know. I, I don't think you can just say well, you know, I didn't get what I wanted because he didn't like me. Have you ever had a conflict with a teacher? It seems very, uh, for me, it seems really premature, because I'm not even really sure what is the group, the issues we're covering, how we're going about doing it. I mean, that's, I know, we, get, we really get sidetracked. And in, in the first meeting we had, I felt I was really getting off on just some tangents. Well, look, let's go over this, okay? Okay. Let's, let's just go right down this performance criteria. Then we can try to relate the performance criteria to what we put up on the board the other day. And we'll, we'll try to pinpoint the problems, you know, involved in, in getting the community together, you know, and then we'll try to state them in, state them in, the, in the, you know, or at least... I, I think what you're, what you're on right now is right on, in a certain sense. It's like, it seems to me, like, if our job tonight is to talk about 
making this place more of a community, a creative community, then the kind of thing you're suggesting would be one yeah, you know, that's, recourse. That's also, thing. interestingly, very connected to curriculum. Uh, you know, so it sort of cuts two ways. But uh, other things like the student lounge, which you, which you brought up, uh, I think that's, you know, that's right on in terms of how do you go about creating a community here, in terms of having a place and how does the, uh, the group itself organize itself to solve that problem and how do they want to use it and so on. What's the concept of that lounge? That certainly, I think, is uh, you know, Roman numeral one, maybe. And I think this thing which came up is certainly somewhere uh, in there. And I, I would be looking for some more Roman numerals this time, only in terms of what kinds of you know, main issues are there. Really, when we wanted to paint that thing up there, we just they probably just getting organized. Because for four years, I remember sitting around meetings just like this. I know it's hard to get organized. Quiet, quiet, let him talk. Where everyone wants to help somehow, and yet until some organization happens, it's sort it just never does. But I think if we made a list like we started to have here, and we had a list of things improvements that we wanted to accomplish and estimates of what they would cost, then we might just have a work day or some sort of focal point that everybody could relate to, announced enough ahead of time so you could adjust schedules around and just to hell with it, you're there. You just there to decide what it is, you know, November 13th or some odd date like that if you haven't got it planned already. Get that set aside and show up in old clothes with paintbrushes and tools. <coughs> And you could probably do half a dozen different small projects all in the same day. And it would be enough to involve us all. But we can't all paint one bathroom. We have to have all, all everything listed that has to be done and yeah. do it all at once. Really, yeah, we we'll take advantage of what people can, can do and what they want to do and what they're interested in doing. And probably make the money go farther, too. Right. Well, it's so recall. Because at the end of the day, things that have to be done here to involve them, uh, like, you know, 100 students one day. What is, we still got one. That, it's all there. The so question can't, is, can we involve 100 students to get those things I think done? what we have to do is go to the faculty and say, look, you know, let's let's take one, one Wednesday and work all day, and at the end of the day, you know, have a free potluck or something like that that the school pays for. I think it's a good idea. got to do a church picnic. Well, a church picnic. No, I mean, you know, it's really great to come out one day and everybody goes away with good feelings. But you know the place is still a dung heap half time. You know, like some of these ever since you have a I <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about one day, hoping we can get a hundred people to get it up for one day. Well, so if they come out and feel good and say, now we've got a community in Norway for five months. Yeah, it's a good process. Well the works you do. The people that the people that want that really want to see the place happen, you know, are gonna keep working and the people that don't really give a damn or don't use it that much, aren't they? But I think you part, can't really expect them. Part of the thing is, if we can, if we can, maybe we have to rewrite the catalog so it's more, it's doing or, it, or else we drop the idea totally, is that we are a student, maintain, and build community. And that's part of your responsibility for what you're paying for and what you're here those three days a week or more for. You got know? So to drop it for one day a week, you know, once. I'm not saying we shouldn't do the work, that is what I said. No, no, no. I know that, but I mean, th th this, you know, to say that this doesn't fit right along with your education, I think, is, is a mistake, too. I think this is just as valid as, as much a part of it as the rest of it. It's only full sections. Well, I think Ina's idea of looking, well, it, it should be two things, yes, but also Ina's idea of looking at space allocations it's gonna be first. A, it's going to be the whole thing. Right, it should be, has to happen first. I know, but what, what I'm saying is if we break it down into physical sections, then we can make, like, two or three people who are interested in each one of the sections, like, a lot of people are interested in, in the student lounge. Yeah, but, so they are, if they, they can, can set up, the they can lounge. set up what, um, what things have to get done and they could figure out how many people they're going to need to get what various things worked sure. out. But, you know, also, I mean, like we can say, hey, the dark room needs venting, but then, you know, in, 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 in reallocating, you yeah, decide yeah. that that's not going to be the dark room at all. You know? <laughs> it took me three years to get to that point, but, you know, um, you know, I think we're going to have to be a little bit realistic about what we can do in one day. Oh, sure, but I mean, if you want to talk, you know, you're talking about one day,
Yeah, no, you should make yeah, it. You want our list? Why don't you make a list? We're talking about the first day. Just one day to get it to get. No, we're talking about the first day. At least you know. I mean, fix the floor in here that's been screwed up for four years. We're talking about the first day. The first day. Because I think if we're talking about getting a feeling of community, it's not the first day is coming. Yeah, that's for sure. There's some graphics for right. So why not think over a period of time? You don't know what to think. You just write a date. If we, <laughs> if we put up, <laughs> if we put up the list of ten committees and each person's name who's in what committee on that board, and in the school, if we say, if we say, no, if we say, not if we say we've got a student lounge committee and we've got a darkroom committee and we've got a cubes committee and a hallway committee. And they say, okay, I'm interested, uh, what do they do with my favorite hallway? What are they going to do to it? And they say, okay, these two people are on it. I'll go talk to them. And they'll find out what we did here. And that's what the feedback will be. Because I think if we wait for another meeting, we'll, we'll get, like, we're, we're hot, let's Sorry. go. You yeah. know? Right. I, I disagree completely. There we go. I don't think we're that hot that we can't <laughs> keep our shit together until Friday or Monday and meet at noontime and clarify it for the rest Listen, of the, the only thing, I, gonna, I think the only thing that we're going to do is decide, decide right now, is decide how many committees that we well, need. I think that's great. And, you know, and <laughs> yeah. label them. You know? I think then we'll put it everybody that. here that's interested in working on one, we'll put their name under it. Anybody else that comes and sees the list can, can add their names to it. Okay. Okay. Jerry, we don't, Jerry, we don't even I have to do it. We don't even have to present the list of uh, quote committees. This. I said one thing about committees about a week and a half ago. We don't even have to. Jerry, we don't even have to present those. I guess. Those what? As committees. Those areas of interest. Interest. All they have to be is topics. I know. All they have to be is topics with, with, and these are the people interested in working on how these topics relate to the school and how they, you know, how it can better the Just a proposal. Through. I think yeah. a committee dictates not, a bit more organization. Yeah, that's the committee, right. The committee what, seems to say that we're going to make concrete what, decisions. Work groups. What it avoids. How about, how about using what energy is it? as a vehicle? Because you're talking about it. There's energy right up there. <laughs> Finish up. He's one of the people who's Hold on. volunteered his services. What it, hopefully, what it, Wait a minute, what is it about? Have you typed all this, Craig? We <laughs> have to like section, section off. The people for, for a certain area, they're going to be working on. You know? okay, like say that? shop. Okay, we need, we need to insulate the shop, right? We need to find out whatever else has to happen. Just to renovate the shop. Lighting has to happen there. Lighting has to happen there. I think one thing, one what, thing and is signing has to happen there. You know, it should all be unified. There are a lot of areas that are going to need committees that we haven't even talked about. I think you're getting down to the little details about the physical plant. Maybe there should just be a physical plant committee at this yeah. point. Yeah. I think that's what all the committees will be about. At this point, and then there, are, no, there are a lot. Of, I think there are a lot of other. Yeah, things. I think it's like Wednesday night series, Wednesday night series, and other events will be there. Social things. Uh, I will. Community I would suggest funding, funding and grants for the school, which is a right. community that could take some work there. I would suggest, in, in, rela in relationship to the fact that there isn't a feeling of community, and there are, and, and possibly because of that, there have been a lot of ripoffs, and the fact that physical plant needs a lot of work and people don't feel good because it's not a good place. I would place a fairly high priority on the physical plant committees. I don't, I don't, want, to get, I don't want to go so deep that we get bogged down and nothing happens. You know? I, 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 I see a possibility. The other things are very important, but happens. I think the physical plant is, is what will get the momentum and the impetus. I think, I think you're right. Maybe, it's, maybe it comes out as number one priority of funds and maybe number one priority in terms of work days and, and actual energy. That doesn't stop right. those other, those other right. Yeah, I mean, right. what this was about was defining that whole process for the future, oh, theoretically. Right. You know, and out of that, then we'll grow the, the maintenance and the repair and the. Exactly what needs to happen, figure out what tools they need. Well, I wouldn't say inferior, but let's say uh, where those other houses were kind of premium grade, everything here was kind of just standard grade. So this whole house was built, I think this came out at about uh, just under $50 a square foot. 
and a, the house contains um, about 5,000 square feet, so it was about a $250,000 house, which when I went down and looked at a little one-bedroom bungalow in Santa Monica Canyon for 119000 I realized what a deal these people had gotten. <laughs> this is the bridge looking back at the guest room. And as I was explaining to the third year class today, these details of the chimneys and all that are pretty much exactly the way they can be done in Mexico. You, so you can be very sculptural if you want to be. And I simply set the parameters of working within uh, cubes, cylinders, spheres, and you know, that type of thing. It's kind of a pebbly surface, exposed aggregate, sort of an exposed aggregate surface. The uh, floors inside the house are cement with a color, integral color, and unfortunately I don't, this day, the day was so dark, I didn't have high enough speed film to get the insides. The concrete lintels had some color in them too to bring that concrete into uh, line color-wise with that brick. Some of that brick has not really been washed off. They need to go over that parts of it with a bristle brush and wash off some of that mortar. There's a lot of loose mortar on the surface there. Yeah, this, 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 right, I think this, uh, I think this might be very expensive here. It was less expensive over there in Arizona because uh, the labor factor was better, I think. And we had some extremely good masons who moved very quickly on the job and weren't afraid of it. They do a lot of, they use an awful lot of concrete block in this area. And these guys are really accustomed to working fast with masonry. Yeah, this house is, has a kind of a heat pump uh, system, which is the more, I think, the best way to handle it over in those dry, hot desert areas, high desert. The driveway is paved with a kind of a reddish um, gravel, which goes very well with the whole thing. And that round window looks into the kitchen. And the view out of that is sensational. And this is one of the Indian, uh, this is more or less the view that you have as you come into the house and look across the canyon at uh, one of the Indian caves up in there. That one's been pretty well ransacked. And this was a little stable building that we did that is really like a western storefront, because behind that it's all just uh, wood studs and a little concrete block. <laughs> Oh, and this is a picture of the chair that was done at about the time that was the, the cushions really don't fit, but uh, it'll give you some idea of some of the furniture design. Douglas fir four by fours. I, I really wanted to utilize the standard uh, Douglas fir such as I was using in, on these uh, projects and see what uh, could be done with it along the lines of some furniture. So this all comes apart. Each one of those connections uh, can be loosened with just by slipping a quarter into the slot on the big screw head. There's a slot right there, and you just turn that. That screws into this cylinder, which goes through there, and it just pulls that together. So the whole arrangement has no glue or anything like that. So that when we got around to doing the tables and things, why we could uh, envision tables with two sets of legs, one at coffee table height and one at dining table height, and you could change it yourself. So that was, a, you know, one of the aspects. And then another rehabilitation job. By this time, um, stuff was, work was beginning to taper off. We were, in, we're into the, uh, you know, 1973 period, and uh, we're really, thinking, actually I had done a master plan for this little girl's school in Pasadena and we decided to buy this house some years before 
but it became a real project over two summers and we transformed this old green and greenhouse that's called the pitcairn house into a fine arts center for the school and they picked up some really uh, really nice spaces for a very little money we did the entire rehabilitation for eighty thousand dollars and they they paid a very low price for the house so they got a lot of building and they actually picked up something that they didn't realize they were going to get which was some really um, rather uh, uh, fine interior spaces in the living room and dining room areas of this house so now this is where they have all their trustees meetings and all their uh, prestige get-togethers all take place here too so they picked up some really usable spaces and this is the back porch where they had set up the art class for the smallest students but we went we put in a dark room and we went through and you know really turned it into a usable building uh, preserving the major interior spaces exactly as they were originally built and then taking bedrooms and bathrooms and so on and transforming them into studio areas. So then, uh, then came the point, I think this was the first point, that this was in 19, seven, end of 1973, almost into 1974, the first time since I'd started out in Pasadena with that first slide when there was nothing in the office that was being built. And then I got this job to do uh, a design study at 20th Century Fox uh, which was a 13-acre site on the back lot. And this project, uh, they selected three or four architects, and we each did studies. And uh, then subsequently, the movie industry started coming back very rapidly into Los Angeles, so the, uh, the project was dropped, and they're still using it as a studio. But it was divided up into six areas of little uh, village clusters, and... Uh, I'm not going to go into it in great detail tonight, but I just wanted to show it as another example of, of a project, uh, kind of a, uh, it was a concept study, really, more than anything else. This is a section through one of the many villages with the parking underneath. The idea was to do it in concrete block, um, with bearing walls going all the way down, similar to some 12-story uh, uh, concrete block buildings which have been built very economically. This, this project had to be built for about, I think it was about $30 a square foot was the budget. And uh, that isn't very much when you start having to include underground parking and all of that. And this is something that I didn't know whether I should show or not, but this is the site that we're currently working on. And this is a isometric view of the project that I've completed working drawings on and we're waiting for the rainy season to let up in Mazatlan to start construction on this. And it's 20 two-story houses, uh, two different floor plans on that site that we're currently working with. And this is a closer up view of that same isometric drawing. Some of the units have second story living room, dining room kitchens, and some of them have ground floor living room, dining room kitchens. That's the, the presence or absence of the outside stairway leading up to the large balconies. But I'm not gonna spend any more time on that. So then at that point, that uh, those working drawings were finished in about, uh, uh, June or the first part of uh, first first part of July, I guess over the fourth of July, maybe we finished up those drawings. So, and during that period, I guess since the first of the year, I had started uh, to explore another area of endeavor, which was really to um, get more heavily into drawing and painting, because I could see that I wasn't uh, going to have an awful lot of architectural work to do, and I did want to keep. Uh, myself developing and busy so while I was thinking of uh, the possibility of teaching somewhere I was also thinking of the possibility of, of getting more deeply into drawing so I started out doing some small felt pen drawings I started out with a rather uh, phallic okay uh, so we'll start I'm Steve Albert and uh, some of you are in my Thursday evening project management course. So, 
what uh, I I'll be going through this uh, afternoon session with you and as I understand the goals of the session uh, I see your problem an arts college some of you mentioned it to me last night just briefly in passing so I'm very happy to get a little deeper understanding of it <coughs> what we intend to do today is uh, carry on a squatters session uh, squatters has been mentioned several times by myself it was mentioned I, I know for a fact at least once last year by Paul Kennan in a lecture uh, part of the Wednesday evening lecture series uh, Paul Kennan is the president of Cotter Rollett Scott and I'm a project manager at Cotter Rollett Scott Architects in Los Angeles what we mean by a squatters is an intensive session that brings together all of the information that uh, you may or may not have on the project the squatters from the looks of uh, your due dates and weekly assignments, you've actually been on squatters for two weeks now, or a week and a half or so that the semester has been going. What you've been doing is meeting with consultants, preparing team reports, and then this <laughs> afternoon, the objective of this afternoon is to uh, come up with a program, establish a program as it's, as it's listed here. Well, all these are very good and uh, within the rules for what should go on during a squatters. Now, uh, if I were to uh, have you actually run a squatters, you know, with a uh, out in the field and that sort of thing, we'd, we'd probably be doing the squatters in one week. In other words, you'd be asked to accomplish all of these tasks in a one week span, maybe five days. Rarely does, do we go beyond five days. What that means is you pick yourself up bag and baggage, uh, go out to the site, uh, take the nearest unoccupied space that uh, is close to the site. If it's in another city, you might uh, take a space that uh, uh, is, is adjacent to the uh, land that you'll be uh, dealing with and uh, squat there. You bring all your supplies, all your equipment. Um, that's why I wanted everybody to I thank them for hustling around and getting me some paper and some tax and some stuff like that. You go with great big suitcases uh, filled with uh, all the things that are needed to run an architect's office. Uh, and you'll do that and uh, uh, sleep in the town or in the area that you're uh, working in for that week. So it's a very exciting process. Uh, to make that time worthwhile, though, a lot of things have to happen. Um, Kathy just told me that uh, some of the teams haven't made it with their reports. Well, isn't that I mean, they, they just weren't given those to do. Oh, they weren't given that? Okay. We decided to knock a few things out. It, it's, it's, it's okay, because what, uh, we'll, we'll go with whatever information we have. And I think that's the point I really want to make, is that when you're out and you only have a limited time to accomplish these things, you have to go with whatever information you might have. Uh, also, I see that you were meeting with consultants. What you'll do during the squatter's time is uh, break yourself off into groups. Uh, one person, generally the project manager, will be uh, sorting out the interviews. For example, you had an economist, uh, faculty members, uh, uh, students, uh, all kinds of people who might have an interest in the project. Uh, what you have to do is sort these people out and get the information from them. You're doing all that during the week, and you're doing that simultaneously as you're exploring some site planning options. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of work that goes on in one week, and generally at the end of the week, what we come up with is what you'll come up with at the end of week three, present preliminary site relationships and approach. Okay, that's what we try to accomplish in one week. Now obviously it sounds very, very difficult, and it is, and it's a sort of night and day procedure. Uh, so, with that in mind, I'm going to try and sort us out here and uh, figure out some way that we can get to uh, establishing a program, okay? By the end of the day today, we want to establish a program. Uh, there's only one way that I know of to do that, and that's either in card form or with your team reports, whatever you might have is to simply put it on the wall, and that's what we do. We make an enormous graphic display of all the information as we gather it. In other words, your, uh, let's say, 
you're having a an interview with uh, let me think of a hypothetical situation an arts college uh, you're having an interview with the somebody tell me what one of the departments is uh, performing arts do you, do you have a uh, okay of music industrial design the head of the music department all right starts to give you his or her needs for this problem uh, what you'll be doing is asking them, and it may be more than one person representing the Department of Music, questions about a whole number of things. What are the goals of the Department of Music as it relates to the Performing Arts Center as a, as a whole? Uh, what are their concepts about teaching music? Uh, facts about the department. How many students? What's their future enrollment? Um, music, uh, all kinds of connotations. I guess is why I picked on music as far as acoustic control, right? So you'll have all kinds of uh, facts and concepts about uh, facts here would be student enrollment, concepts would be how to acoustically control any space. We haven't designed the uh, uh, arts college yet. Needs would be the translation of the goals, concepts, and facts into a space allocation program, all right? So obviously what we have to have is a set of goals for not only the arts college, but for each department. Then we have to have uh, concepts, what's teaching gonna be like at this place, facts, numbers, that sort of thing, student body, uh, uh, faculty, uh, how they teach, this sort of thing, and to translate that into sets of needs. Needs in this case are space, are space needs. Uh, there's not really much that uh, I generally do at, at something like this. If the squatters is going well, the uh, client and users are giving you all this information. State the problem is your response to the problem, which is um, present preliminary site relationships and approach. If that goes well, though, you can get the client and the users to give you a great deal of direction on that end also. So what we have is a... Uh, uh, perhaps rather clever way of, in a very short amount of time, getting to all the relevant data and information that you'll need to go ahead and uh, solve the problem. Now, okay, so it's going to be very difficult, but uh, can we start? I'm, I'm just going to start from the, from the top here. Do we have goals that we all agree on or don't agree on for this problem, for each department or the art center as a whole? Flexibility as a goal. Uh, yeah, we need a. Um, uh, okay, we got project manager. We need design technicians now. Uh, that are <laughs> so everybody gets a label. So we need uh, we uh, need the designers who are going to copy this information down and make little cards, and give us little one one sentence statements as uh, as they're being done. Okay, I don't know if I should. Uh, yeah, why don't I just. Who wants to play a designer for the goals portion? Okay. Okay. Okay, you don't have that many cards. And what you have to do is listen, and the whole group is now going to carry on a half-hour discussion. Uh, you're the team. You're the group. You're going to be designing this thing. What are the goals of the problem? We've got one, flexibility. <coughs> These people... Uh, you uh, met with a whole number of people. What, what are some of the goals they talked about? Okay, I have a goal for the music department. I would say a goal for the music department would be to turn out a bit more composers rather than something like a, a university where you turn out a band. You know? Okay, so there's a... Uh, I disagree. I think, the, I think the music department's goals were to uh, turn out performers and composers. Okay. I'm going to need a chair. Let's see, this is going to be an all-day session. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to have to sit down and take notes, too. I'm going to take notes, also, to see if I can help you sort this thing the bias, out. The bias of the person, the music spokesman, was against... Uh, it was more toward performance and toward composition. And it was less toward... Individual. History, musical history, musical theory. literature, musical theory. 
it was it was geared toward the production. Thank you. It was geared toward the production of music, either in graphic or instrumental form. Don't don't write anything down yet, because we don't have any agreement. <laughs> we don't have any agreement. Can I flip it over? Yeah, that's no, that's okay. You can actually. Um, no, I'll take that back. What what you should probably do is uh, when you hear something that's a tag word. What was, the, what was the tag word of this, uh, of the first gentleman here? Flexibility. Uh, oh, flexibility was the first tag word from Ruben Wright. And behind you, what was the second sort of tag word? Probably uh, composer. Composition. Well, uh, that's uh, uh, individual skills rather than, how can we put that in terms of a goal? That's all. Just, ju ju just a quick short sentence. To train highly skilled technicians, musical technicians. No, it's not technicians. No, it's not like technicians. You were actually talking about saying like that. No, what? <laughs> I think he was talking about musical performance. Yeah. And use of an instrument. And he was talking about musical composition. That's what, that's what writing music is called. And training highly skilled people to do those two things. To do those two things. <clears throat> okay, and, one, and re just repeat the two things again. Musical composition and performance Skill. excellence. Musical composition and performance excellence. Uh, of, of an individual instrument. I agree. Okay. Those are technical skills. Just How do you define technical skills? No. Uh, not in music. That's bullshit. Those are technical skills. Yeah. See, you have to learn how to do those things. His point was that if they didn't have technical skills before they arrived at the age of 18, when they would be at this college, that they didn't have a chance of being at the caliber that he expected them to be. So when you're talking about music, musical technique and techniques are accomplished before this time. He's talking about starting at the age of four. So he's talking about the additional things to technical skill. Okay, which is performance skills. Performance skills and the subtleties of composition and creativity. Okay. We can talk about limiting it as a continuing skill rather than providing also beginning skills. Like beginning and training people in instruments. So he's leading that up. Before we get on to this whole routine of, of what the music school is going to do, I, I would think that if we're going to start off with goals, why don't we try and get a general okay. attitude toward what the, what whole, the school's all about? Cool. Sounds good. Just on music. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, how about it then? The whole place. Well, I think one of the problems with uh, the, the one that we studied, CalArts, was that they their idea was to establish a, a progressive school, but they based their program on what they considered to be progressive thinking by the few that were setting up each department. Whereas if, in my opinion, what I would really like to see out of the school is not a program set up around someone's progressive thinking, but a program set up to produce progressive thinkers. So you want a creative atmosphere. Yeah. Right. Not one that well, dictates any particular a yeah. direction or anything, but one that grows naturally with the way that the persons or people that are in the program. Okay. So a natural growing okay. system of some sort. Okay. What I wanted to see was a decentralized school with a closely connected framework where each school functions independently but is supportive of the general school policy. So there's independence of the sub disciplines, <coughs> I mean, of the various, the, the disciplines, architecture, planning, et cetera, et cetera, have independence. <coughs> Like at Cal they try to achieve a high level of interaction, and I don't know that is. Okay. Okay. That's a very. Uh, there's a lot of. Um, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is your statement is really a highly charged statement, and I wonder if there isn't a great deal of response to that, because it it, it uh, connotes at least to me a whole number of things. Well. If, if you're thinking just letting it 
grow in a natural sort of way. You don't have to even state that. Just state that the schools themselves, that they're free on their own to be able to do what they wish, not underneath you know, the decision of somebody that happens to be in a good spot in the music department with all the other heads, that they make the decision to get some money or something and just allocate the money or their direction to themselves and then they can take that and grow in any kind of pattern that they want in the school. If they want to relate with some other art, they can. <coughs> I think we're talking about an administration that's subordinate to the sum of the schools rather than the other way around. Because the description of what happened at Cal Arts was that the, the school did not develop naturally. It developed unnaturally because of various political groups who assumed okay. uh, administrative posts. Sounds like a good point, yeah. Would you you'd probably say that that's what happened at Cal Arts? Yeah. But I, I still think she has a uh, fairly strong administration in that she be supportive of the school. I can go with a, a, a school structure that I have. I have a, a school president who represents the school and those kind of decisions in development, business, and academics and in the school relations. I believe there would be two vice presidents. A vice president of development, business, and vice president of academics. A vice president of development and business that would be in charge of getting financial aid, bringing, attracting new students to the school, and running the school. The vice president of academics would be in charge of um, setting up a, a, a good academic quality. And then underneath the vice president of academics would be all the department chairmen. And they, with the academic team, would work to set up the curriculum. But they would have pretty much the final say in what would happen. I would, I would say that you're setting up the case where the vice president of academics, if he is himself an academician, is going to do precisely what, what Sabotnik is talking about. Well, he will favor the discipline that he is from. And that, that to put, to put why academics, can't, why, can't they, I mean, why can't administration be somebody to keep the bills paid and sweep the floors and keep records? And that's it. Right. So what I question is, shouldn't, wouldn't it be better if the schools had the equivalent of a little council or uh, instead of maybe a president maybe that guided their own direction board yeah that board they're like members of each um, facility or each school within this university that uh, makes a decision as a corporate uh, group instead of as a single monarch I think it should be one person and that person has no he, it's like Don Cooper Art Center. He represents Art Center. He goes out to the community and he is a constant person who keeps the coins in the flow. But he doesn't really have that much, I feel, that much decision making within the school structure. Well, how do you, I don't know names of the people, but how do you, as far as when we were talking to Steve Sokowitz when we were out there, um, do you justify uh, the fact that the mu music center is the most thriving of the different schools? How would you eliminate that? In a, I think one of the differences in the way she said her, <clears throat> she stated her poem, which was similar to mine, if you're taking decentralized schools, in other words, each school is a unit, and it's handling its own influx of people and its own monies, then it's going to grow and, and absorb within itself. Whereas in Kellogg's, they were all stuck into one huge building, which means the only way you could grow is by taking from somebody else. But decentralization is the same thing. Decentralization is not physical. You're not talking about a physical thing. I think you're talking about a political thing. Decentralization physically isn't the same as political. Why is it the same? I was thinking that the president. You could have one school at one. Business administration in nature. He would be you could have a one school at one corner of the campus, one school at the other, but if they had one guy in administration governing both schools, then they're not decentralized uh, 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 politically. A memo is just as effective across Only campus physically. or through a system as it is if you yeah, pass it face to face. Okay, so you're objecting to your vice president of academics. Absolutely. Okay, I understand that. We'll fire up. <laughs> what, okay, what's the, one of the rules of the game now is... Uh, uh, we can skip around if we want, and what we have proposed is uh, something that would fit under the facts section, and that is a um, organization chart for the for the school. So I'm afraid that everybody really has to work hard during this thing, and 
since you're so bold to bring it up, you have to take either a three by five or a five by or eight and a half by eleven and diagram it and just stick it right on the wall. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you do it right there. That's where you have the scissors. Yeah. Okay. So you can take the next few minutes on your own just to get it done however you think is good, and then get this a. Uh, uh, one thing I'm going to have to keep on remembering, and uh, excuse me if I don't at times, uh, obviously when I'm doing this situation, we can only have one answer. <laughs> you know, we, we've, we've got to agree on one uh, organization for the, um, for the body that we're dealing with. Uh, if you have another one, since you'll be dealing with the problem uh, more or less independently, then uh, I'll have to take that into account and feel free to uh, amend that or add to it. Okay, in other words, it appears that we can have different sets of facts, <laughs> which is interesting depending upon how people different see the problem. Different goals, different, goals, <laughs> different, goals, different, different goals, different everything. Problems. Right, so I don't know if what, if, if what really we're going to have here is here's each student, you know, and they have their own thing across the line there, maybe. Well, it seems logical to just minimize bureaucratic red tape. I think everybody knows. Okay, everybody wants yeah, to do that. The concept that came up was subordination of administrative to, to right. schools. <laughs> okay. One thing, though, um, I, I would just, uh, maybe I would take issue to something that uh, was said over on this side, though. Uh, is uh, a memo the same thing as face-to-face -face contact? So something uh, I find... Uh, Depends on who looks I said that. I said that, but I would yeah. say that... If the memo says you can't have your new building or you can't have your new program, uh, as a matter of fact, it might be more effective because it's more insulated. Yeah, it doesn't promote any dialogue between it or any type of reason. Well, the regents of the University of California managed to get their fingers into the most minute pies through the, through the controls they wield for budget. And, and uh, there's a group of generalists. Uh, yeah. I think it would probably be more I think, personally, I think it would be more effective if the faculties would individually hold squatter sessions like we are doing. To determine what their goals their are. Problems, right. Fight out their own finances, not leave the room until they've come to some conclusions. Right. And within the limits set by the business managers. As a matter of fact, the state of California set up the University of California system so that the regions were only to be business managers. They have assumed more role. They were not given more role. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's because the people with the money make the decisions. If, right. if, uh, if you decide that that isn't, you know, there's a there's a hard uh, line to draw there. Whether the people that you think, whether you're really trying to please the user, or you're trying to please the budget. I mean, if you were just strictly going to go to the user's yeah. standpoint, you would probably never have enough money to cover it. But there should at least be some kind of common. So what, so what happens? The business administrator starts to become the mediator. But if that's the case, we run the danger. I forget which of the two groups would point out this danger, but the, the mediator gets to be the decision maker. Is uh, that what we're worried about, basically? More or less? OK. OK, well. Uh, how are we doing on these things as goals now? Let's let's tug it back to goals. What do we have? What do we have? Yeah, what do you have? Um, decentralize the disciplines, um, the question of whether you subordinate the administration and whether the decentralization is physical or political. Natural growth being a goal, flexibility in the space, either physical flexibility or flexibility of the program itself. The, you know the philosophy of the school mm -hmm. music there's a still the goal of the whether you want to make um, performers or composers and then minimize red tape okay why don't you stick the uh, those up on the wall okay and so we'll start with those another goal though that might be considered is we're just talking about school facilities mm -hmm. and in the program there's listed uh, housing quite a few other things to which yeah why don't we just uh, why don't we just get right down to uh, basics then. Um, when you saw a program, I would interpret this, let, let me say this, that uh, generally what uh, I would come in contact with is a letter from a university saying that this is sort of an idea of what they think they'd like to have, okay? And this is what you have. It's an idea of what they'd like to have. Uh, 
a physical science center a library physical education education facilities recreation center and housing for one hundred percent of the students in the site lines forty percent married adequate commercial facilities a community theater not to a shell galleries etc that's what i was speaking of there's a need for a homogeneous Institute, yeah, community involvement. Uh, I just, I just heard a word. I, I heard the word community. Where's my, where's my car? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what do they want to create? It sounds like they want to create a community here. Right. Okay. If not a separate community, <coughs> one that blends with the current uh, community, possibly low impact. You mean with the current neighborhood community? Right. 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 In what way do you mean? Like, you're using very strong Yeah. Well, that's a very interesting point, by the way. Look, I'm guy crazy for interjecting. Um, one of the neatest things about goals are verbs. Um, verbs trigger people, like blend into the community. What do you mean, you know, blend into the community? Does that mean that you go up against the wall and they paint stripes, you know, across you and you sort of blend into the wall? That sort yeah, of like, thing. I would even That's right. Is, is use of the word low impact. Maybe what you want to do is provide a counterpoint to the community. And that an arts college is different from residential factories and that what it is, what it is inherently. Okay, I think maybe is low it, impact should maybe be defined as low physical impact instead of low social impact. Why not make should it be a high social impact? How do you make housing for 3,000 people in a school for 2,000 people into the community and not make uh, 5, it? 5,000 people. Yeah. An existing community of 5,000, so you're taking 2,000 away. Over 70 acres. So you're relocating them. So that means you have less uh, a, a, a population in a given area than you would have but existing. You're making an what if you were just adding it to it and not subtracting and not doing bread or replacing or taking them all away? Maybe well, that's one of the issues that we're going to have to come What to community are you talking about? Are you talking about just the land that we have involved, or are you talking about the people around it? Are you talking about okay. all of Santa Monica? Right now, I'm talking about the people around it and, and you mean on the other side of Santa Monica, the other side Santa of Colorado? Monica and West Los Angeles, the farther, farther the, the less the impact will be. I mean, people in Beverly Hills are going to have a less impact than the people that live on the other side of San Francisco. Right, so, yeah, but I want to know the the bounds sort of of your com community. The well, people in Beverly Hills aren't going to aren't going to care. The people Where across you, the street will be. How about if you took the tax instead of stating the negative low no impact, we took the positive tax and said, how about if we made a positive impact or we added to the community, and maybe that would be more acceptable. Because then you do it many ways. That's what that's what that to get to get to get to get referring to. Yeah. Now we're gonna do Okay, so we want to uh impact on community. Very good. Um, let's not quit there because you're getting into some of the, uh, some sort of gut things on the, I think what kind of place it's going to be. Uh, one of the things I had, and I'm talking about now, the <coughs> school as a whole, I thought that if you're decentralizing the, the discipline or whatever, then the e an emphasis or a goal is to create a, a real interaction and high energy in the spaces in between the buildings or in between these schools. Whether that's within a building or it's outside of the building, doesn't matter, but just... Um, well, that, that comes under the thing that we're not only trying to get something that has a positive impact with the community, but we're trying to create a community within this. It's yeah, that's it. education community. And I think one of the biggest points in that is to get interaction and high energy create that And through more than school facilities, wow. through, through the extra facilities. living facilities. Wow. But there will be facilities in common. <coughs> At least accidental interaction. Oh, yeah. Cause it to happen. We 
which gets to another point that as an item under that, I had centralized facilities such as administration, the larger common spaces, like spaces that are going to handle 300 or 600 people, you know, those kind of spaces. Large galleries where professional exhibitions would go on in the school, or uh, a library on a more general nature. And um, the physical activity, the community activity, the commercial, and overflow spaces. You know, try to get all those into that are adding directly to the community of the college. They're not at the edge where they're not adding to it. They're adding right to it. What about the commercial as being part of the outer community also? Well, I think it, you know, again, if you're adding to, you can add to in many ways. You could add to by having that the commercial say react with the community or. Whatever. That's one of the things in the community around here is poorest. Yeah. In but the it wouldn't be bad for them to come on the campus too. If you're not going to have an exclusionary attitude. Okay, uh, just an interjection here for the rules of the game. Uh, what you're getting into now, uh, fantastic, is concepts. The trouble is, we're losing some of them. So I've got to go through the same thing again. I've got to have people uh, start jotting down their concepts. Okay, so we're going to run out of cards in real hurry. Just pass a few around, and we'll pass a few. We seem to have two uh, good groups here going. Okay. Keep Randy. I'll pass them back here again. Okay. Now, what just happened? We've got a goal: high energy, intensive use. Terrific. Okay. And what's a, what's what, what was the concept that you just talked about for high energy, intensive use? By centralizing. Uh, okay, so what you got to do for me, once you come up with something like that, is you got to make a very clever little diagram, non-architectural, that, that illustrates that concept. Maybe a bubble diagram, maybe a sketch, maybe who knows what. Maybe a cartoon, right. Could, it could be anything. Give it a try and see what happens. It's very interesting to try and work that, to try and do that, by the way. Uh, one of the reasons why you do that is, uh, being an architect and all that stuff, um, uh, you love to draw and um, uh, long-winded uh, narratives bore you. So isn't it terrific that you can reduce a cosmic concern such as high energy intensive use into a little cartoon or, or something like that. So see if you can do it. <laughs> And uh, don't be bashful, uh, jump right up and, and, and stick it on the wall. I think one thing beyond the high energy intensive use okay. might be the concept of diversity. And I know we were talking about that a lot, but actually going along with the centralization idea would be bringing in uses that would probably not normally be thought of in let's say a school environment, almost you know, like a almost like an urban scene where a lot of things are happening. Even though it's hot, even though it's intensive use, it's intensive intensive multitudes of uses. So you, you're really bringing in. I think it's another aspect of the high energy, just the word diversity. That's great. We got now 90 seconds to put all that down on the car. <laughs> we also have to deal with it's a, maybe a minor factor. I'm not sure, but there is a there needs to be for right security right reasons maybe some separation between community facilities, ones that would be school facilities that the community might come in and use, and strictly school facilities, studios, and things. There needs to be some physical separation between those. Well, one way of handling that is by access. You know, like a, one of the things is a community theater, yeah. you know, having the doors closed on one side so that you can just come in do that. You know, maybe we're starting to get on the thing that this is becoming a show place, a place where, you know, the university shows off to the community and it's high art or such, and that it maybe it's getting away from it being a place for artists um, for people to become artists or expand on their creativities and let other artists work that are maybe teaching at, at the university. I know there was one strong statement by some more subotnics stating that he really didn't like the attitude that it was a, 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 a showpiece, that CalArts was a showpiece, that he more or less liked his 
his um, studio just to do his work and didn't want to be bothered by outside people. And since we're talking about that, I think it maybe be interesting for as far as, you know, is this, what facilities, like he said, will become community? And what's public and what's private? Like, I would think the work areas and the classrooms would tend to be private areas and the galleries and uh, theaters, whatever, the public, considered public areas. Well, we need a diagram on that. Yeah, sorry, Ken. You're trying to be quiet. I just can't. I think you're overlooking a very key point as you say this, though. There are, there, in the education process, and it may not be the adult community you're going after, but it may be that there is still a, that there's an education process that can take place in the interchange, particularly. Uh, I know we started here and we never were able to make it come off, and that was the interaction between the elementary to each child and what goes on here, and there's always a little mind hole, which never happened, where they would be able to interrelate with those of you who would be at a whole other level and possibly get that kind of a relationship, but that has never taken place. But I, I know in one case, there's a big difference between the show place that uh, the Walt Disney bringing through people that he's using his, you know, facility to sell versus the idea of, of extended education. Now, you could have the concentrated points that you were talking about. There's also that other thing. So before you shut down the facilities, I'd, I'd like to extend the thought process. Thank you. How would you begin to um, those people with the cards? Uh, I, I really am serious. When I want you to feel free to, if that, if, if these thoughts start to jog, uh, can we have some coming here? as how we accomplish this sort of interface between the community, extended education, et cetera, do it. I mean, make, make a funny little diagram. One of the things is that we can't afford to lose any of these ideas. Right. Another thought there, as we've used our facilities here and brought in the outside community, I think a part of their coming in into your actual <coughs> work space is one of the exciting parts of our school, mm -hmm. which doesn't occur anywhere. In other words, normally you go into a fixed auditorium or you get into a set pattern display. And it's kind of nice to see the working arrangement of the people. Now, whether that's, you found that to be in conflict, that's that people can create a nice object from there. So uh, we've always got to have a plus and may find it a conflict. Maybe something you want to sort out. Okay, I'm going to contribute one on that. Using the wall. Okay. Part of the scaffold and hold that. And like I had never run across that, and I found that was going to be the first part of this whole course. Most of us were. should uh, sort of be organized generally? Uh, generally, yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> in other words, into distinct elements. Each, each element seems to have its own identity. Okay? Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. I mean that we start with the housing, we work out from the housing. Okay, housing is the genesis of the whole yeah. organization. It's a concept. In other words, you're working in a vertical right? Yeah. I guess. Okay, I'm going to do that trick. It all starts with a heart.
tool. Maybe we should get some facts on the uh, footage and uh, actual space needs on these two things. As far as it, we have 70 acres total, and what is a rough percentage is it's going to be allowed for community space, school space, and housing space. Okay. We can um, we can skip back and forth. That's that's fine. Okay. What what it all comes down to, you might uh, want to use a. Um, if it's more convenient, use an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper to write down some of that information, or do it on the cards. What do you got? Seventy acres. Okay. Uh, what else do we know? Doug, are you talking about settings that everybody in the area meet those percentages? Oh no, this is maybe just rough percentage. Just to give us an idea of how much yeah. space the project is going to take. Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, Right. Chew on that for a little while and, and get a rough percentage yeah. of it. Because of what people have got. We sort of did that one. And we can maybe, maybe those have been refined. Yeah. 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 How much space you take up on the side depends a lot on the design. Well, you, have to, you don't necessarily talk about the space, but there are minimum needs, say, for the housing of 3,000 people. Yeah. And also going back right. to our, our impact on the communities. Yeah. Okay. You know, that starts, we're starting to dictate, you know, certain attitudes on the, you know, the design. I was saying how much, how much space 300,000 square feet really the Right, right. Right, saying how many people really are coming to the school and how many are there. So you can okay. see the facts. I was yeah. thinking that maybe before we get into that phase, just before we do, we might, in a way, try to summarize or encapsulate some of the ideas that have maybe not come out because not that many have spoken. And yeah, I'm try, try and go around yeah. the room to get urge everyone, every person, to make at least one positive statement about the school as he sees it, whether it's a new statement or whether it's been made before. Okay, unless there are some that hate the problem, you know, which would be interesting to find out. I hate the problem. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I have, I have a suspicion, too, that uh, uh, we have uh, only begun on goals and concepts. You know, uh, just to give you an idea, and I don't exaggerate, um, we did a small building. It was less than $3 million in estimated construction value. It was a center for handicapped children. And uh, we managed to cover the wall from that side to that side. And the equivalent area, that side to that side, top to bottom, uh, packed with cards. Uh, once you really get going, I'm sure you find out that this thing is, uh, it should be endless. Because you see, we've only started with goals of the school as a whole. We can go back now into goals of the individual uh, departments. Uh, and if we wanted to, uh, goals of the players, faculty, uh, users, community, et cetera, what are their goals and use of the facility? Concepts, uh, we, we have some there that go with general organization, and then we have concepts about particular organization. One of the things you mentioned about um, uh, when we talk about high energy and intensive use, my God, there, there must be a dozen concepts that would relate to high energy intensive use. You know, it's like your own building, SciArc, is high energy intensive use. What's, what are the physical characteristics of high energy intensive use? Each one of those goals cards then trips uh, a whole series of, a whole flood of thoughts, of concepts on how one might, with, without any bounds, with, with no boundaries now in terms of dollars, programs, materials, accomplish it in terms of concepts. See? So, uh, Let's yeah, but it, it's interesting, it? even within this building, we say high energy intensive use, there are areas that are very low energy and very, the, the use is, is, is really very minimal. Uh, and I'm sure you formulated a reason why. Do you, why is that? Well, the third floor is access. Okay. So how do you generate intensive use? Provide access. You have to provide access to every point, don't you? That can make a nice little card for <laughs> someone who wants to. Come on, Randy. Mm -hmm. Provide yeah. access, right? Provide access to every point. Okay, in that access, the, maybe the internal links and um, not necessarily within the buildings, but in, in the inter, um, relationship.
relationship between the different schools that we get into a more pleasant um, surrounding, a surrounding that is more uh, uh, maybe maybe a counterpoint to the high activity that is maybe happening as far as inside the, the school itself. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so I was just every talking about pleasant surroundings, um, internal uh, internal atmosphere, pleasant surroundings. Then every point has to be not only accessible but usable. Right. Okay, and a good place to be in, which means that every place has to uh, encourage. Every point of the facility has to encourage some aspect of the arts. You have to be careful okay, when, you, when you go to design this, that there aren't any uh, places that discourage exploration of the arts. Okay. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. Boy. Okay. factor of need and everything I mean the space we already have just down here on the ground floor is enough to accommodate everything that goes on I would imagine if the, if the school swells and maybe took on uh, another 100 students 150 students you'd probably find more classes meeting well, up there just to make it use the studio or classroom space <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. You don't in, you, you can title it student lounge <laughs> Which is an interesting factor in, in itself. You know, the, the gathering place where the students and the lounge and the lounge yeah. and what are what are those things that you want those those areas to do? Uh, it's going to be a big part of the whole operation of your school. And, and, and it's interesting that the lowest energy area in our school happens to be the what is categorized as the lounge and uh, places for those those things to go on. So either the activities are wrong or the energy related to it is wrong or something else. That's also why we Pleasant viewing spot in this kind of sense, and that, that's a very yeah. strange dichotomy. So therefore, yeah, but there's something wrong in terms of the no, the interaction of the space with the user, and, and yeah. I mean, there's going to be a key. And I mean, you can say, you know, you're going to place in this uh, complex of yours what you think are going to be great areas for for gathering and organization. You may find that that the programming of that is as key as the place where you are. And I think it's going to start to deal with those issues realistically. And for a lounge to work as a student lounge, I think there has to be something other than than just social interaction that is the main, or it has to be something more than social interaction that would draw the students there in the first place. Um, that was the point that I was trying to make with the surroundings, that the surroundings um, provide an atmosphere for that inter interaction to take place wherever it may happen and not necessarily dictate this this little green piece of grass is for a gathering spot, this little piece of grass is for a gathering spot, but that make it all... Um, well, first of all, you've got to find out why people gather in the places that they do. And we, and we just went through a lot of that this morning. I mean, that, 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 that whole... Where the action is. Right. And then, you know, you're not providing faculty offices or something like that, so that you also don't have a lot of like, student and faculty interaction going on in the lounge. Okay, maybe we should I take maybe a, a poll of just uh, randomly just where do students go when they want a lounge? They do leave, they right? They go to someplace else. Yeah. And do what? And do what? Or they go, or they go to, go to film. somebody's cube and sit around. They go next door. Where there's something they to eat. They go to drink, probably. Okay. The only, the only, at the AA in London, 
the area of the school that really works the best is the student lounge, and you know, in that area, it happens to be upstairs, it has nothing to do with the central part of the school. And they serve beer, wine, drinks, and it starts to operate as a bar at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, during the day, there are places for people to sit around and talk and gab, and it works. There are students around that place all the time doing that. They're not really doing studio work, which is the opposite. It's very interesting. And as, I don't think it has anything to do with where, it, where it's located in that case. Or anything. Yeah, it's what, the people or the beer? The people, the beer, the wine, and the air action. And I think that's, you know, that's what's new. Well, when we have something going on upstairs, it functions then as a student lounge, which is, they have something going on every evening, right? That's a program, yeah. In other words, that's a mm -hmm. program for them to be involved with. Yeah. So I don't know whether that's the key. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. Well, I think if you look at it also, that when do you go to the lounge? It's usually when you've got a few moments. And usually that's also, you grab it for eating, too, because you never have time to eat. So when you have a few moments, you go eat. I mean, that's the way a student works, because he's always working. And the other Hopefully. reason this happens is within the traffic pattern. As you're going from here to a place and you meet somebody along that, if there's a nice place to step aside and talk, you will. You know, that's why those chairs get used out in front of the van. And I think that's why the patio out front gets used. It's on the traffic pattern. I think traffic patterns are a real good place. So isn't there maybe design meeting places and then uh, almost one self create? Yeah. You know, we can design a coffee shop and they all may sit out on the grass anyway. I think I think what we have to realize is maybe that uh, at least in our in our building, I don't think lounge works. Lounge and relaxation is not the break. I think a break from study for us mainly is interacting with other people, talking in the shop, or talking about other things, and that lounge meaning restfulness and everything like that, uh, quiet space is not really they're that high of a priority of what a lounge means. And so maybe that lounge area upstairs needs some other factor other than view uh, to really get it working. And that we, we could maybe investigate that when we get into what a lounge area means for us. I think that was said, though, that's a program. There's something there to draw besides just the facility. Yeah. There's something to an activity going on. And we open up beer and wine at 4.30 every day, and all, all instructors and all students are welcome up and you buy it cheaply. We would be up there. Yeah. 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 The drinkers yeah. and the wine are yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the best thing that we can do is just have a But it does mean somebody has to you know, do that. So I think when you're thinking of this, you also have to think of how you're going to make those spaces work. I think we've come to a point in time where I think we're trying to recognize that there's, there's a dual aspect, and I don't know. Space itself right. doesn't necessarily and create a use for it. The space doesn't necessarily That's right. And Kelly certainly pointed that out to us in the stuff where they had to actually have a program to make the space. First, be understood by the people, and then later become the use for Yeah, we've uh, we, we plan or I've been involved in planning a great many uh, what we've called multi-purpose facilities that um, the, the keys are handed over to the potential users and of course we come back uh, months, years later and uh, some either the space is then has been appropriated by an individual group and it's no longer multi-purpose or uh, the space is shunned entirely and it becomes no purpose. Uh, but one thing you have to really get, get at in, in your concepts uh, are what's going to make a place, you know, you want a place where um, there's this high energy use, intensive use, uh, and you're going to have to really figure out what, what creates dead spots. Can you predict it? Are those sorts of things predictable, maybe, I guess, is a, is a more basic question. To a certain extent, they are, but then also to a certain extent, I think what we're saying over here is, um, there's going to be a certain percentage of actual program space and there's going to be a certain percentage of found space. Uh, a place where there was a certain pattern of sunlight that you didn't anticipate and that somehow became a little grassy gathering spot, you know? That, that happens and I think what you have to do is allow for those sorts of things to happen. Um, you can do that. You, you, you can somehow allow for that. You can also predict, uh, you know, some pretty unhealthy spaces. Uh, spaces that uh, 
have no circulation lines to them, you know, backs of buildings, no way to get there. They're in the shadow all the time. You can figure, if you've made a little activity diagram, you can also figure that no one's ever going to be there. So uh, obviously, a measure of success is how much or how little of those kinds of spaces your individual scheme has. I think a key to that is what Tom said, the pedestrian and the traffic pattern. Right. Really influential to that space. That's right. I have a feeling, too, that, a, that a, a program space is more likely to be used and modified than an unprogrammed space is going to be discovered and exploited. <clears throat> Not always, but I think. Mark, I like your idea about swimming back getting input now. Yeah. <coughs> I got it. I've got a con concept that's not necessarily one I follow, but I just thought that the area could be like an artist's refuge. You could dictate, here's the site, the northern boundaries, these about the southern boundaries, and just let them go, and then they could check out the equipment that they would need, and uh, you'd let them know which factories are to be used, or they would um, allocate those by themselves, and try to get space through that one. But, uh, wow, so you... In other words, you peel all this off and you just keep the existing buildings? Yeah, they work within the existing framework. And the concept for the <laughs> use of the facility is um, places cleaned up pretty much and you just get assigned space on an as-need basis? They were getting assigned when they would find what they'd want and just take it. Okay. Uh, interesting. 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 Okay, but make sure they get something. Sort of survival of the fittest. Space. What's that? <laughs> that? Wouldn't that just then be the survival of the fittest or whoever gets there first gets the, you know, because if you have a, if you have an arts cause, there's certainly going to be many, many overlapping uh, necessities from each of the students. So, you know, you have the graduates with their space that increases like a little bit each year. There's a certain, certain economy. That's in right. The amount of effort you're going to put in, you're not going to take up more than you can really handle. That's right. And there's also the pressure of your neighbor getting really mad if you're taking up yeah. too much. So there's those kind of social pressures that... It's a very romantic, uh, very romantic image. You know, um, there was a, a story of, uh, I read about Paul Clay when he was uh, asked to be a professor at the Bauhaus. And they gave him an enormous studio. And I guess you know most of Clay's paintings were rather small. And so off of the studio, enormous studio, I guess it was like half the size of the main room. And off the studio, there were a couple little storage rooms. And he opened the storage room, and I guess half in jest and uh, uh, half serious, he said, this will do just fine. And, <laughs> and you can give the rest to somebody else. But uh, it's very interesting. You know, also, one thing that that conjures up is, um, uh, I notice it uh, in, well, where does that thing happen? There are actually places where that happens. I was thinking of one, and, and that's the beach. You know, have you ever seen a beach situation where you go down there and um, there are the regulars in one area, you know, the volleyball players in another area, the uh, day crowd is surfers. pretty much close to the cars, the surfers are in another, you know, serious type row in another area, and people tend to, uh, without, with this grand expanse of beach with no boundaries, establish it and seem to live harmoniously. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, well that's the sort of thing. We really want to make sure that we don't go through the day without losing any of these things, because they're all really great. I'm not sure that our experience here proves that people will find and develop spaces. Find and develop spaces. Some do, some do. Some do. Of the two that the people that we have here say just as a faculty member, we have to provide for somebody that does.